Thanks for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to introduce some of the staff, starting with uh, Brittany. Hi, everyone. My name is Brittany. I'm currently the surgical coordinator here at Park Avenue LASIK. So I'm currently seeing 2015. I see better than your average person. Because I'm a per person who works here, but I'm also a past patient, I tell everybody, use me as a resource. And I talk to everyone, listen, I can go from recovery. I can talk to you anything about what you think the pros and cons are, all the way to how I felt during that weekend to what I felt in the operating room. And so I tell everybody, even besides myself, talk to all the patients. So for me, I always tell all the patients when they're done and they're in their post-op period, listen, you got the procedure done, share the gift of sight. It's really one of, it's a miraculous thing. Like when you sit up from the laser for the first time, people to see like, you know, the cuts in the brick, it's something unimaginable. A lot of us haven't been able to see since like second grade, first grade. And so to go 10, 15, 20 years, we're like, whoa, I've been missing out. It's like, I wish I had done this earlier. Okay. All right, so we're also going to have Dr. Dovzik on here. And before I introduce her, I just want to talk a little bit more about the difference between LASIK and LASIK. So basically with LASIK, you have to actually make a cut into the, flap, into the eye itself and create a flap to correct the vision. There are some side effects that are pretty common that come with it, including permanent dry eye syndrome, because you're cutting nerves in the eye, and also reduced vision at night or having night glare. And for a lot of people who drive on the road, that could make a huge difference between their safety and final, you know, getting to their final destination, so to speak. The reason why I'm talking about this right now is because Dr. Dovzik originally was practicing before she met Dr. Chin, and she was a little bit skeptical at first because she had heard about LASIK and it had come, you know, what kind of high prescriptions can you do? They're not candidates for LASIK. But little known to a lot of people out there, if you're not a good candidate for LASIK, you might still be a good candidate for LASIK because it is 10 times safer. Now, why is it safer? It's because there's zero cutting involved. So obviously, it's less invasive, and therefore, there are fewer risks involved with that kind of thing. But I want to have Dr. Dovzik talk a little bit more about that. When I came here uh, uh, with my friend, uh, Dr. Natalia Kishenko, uh, we saw a patient with minus uh, 12 and minus 14 and minus 20, and we were talking to Dr. Chin, uh, we're not going to do pre-op because it's crazy. It's too high prescription. You should do ICL. But after a few years, when we saw results that everything is uh, doing great, and um, also here are a lot of cases uh, uh, where uh, Dr. Chin doing cross-linking with LASIK. It's not common in America yet, but here you can get great results. I did my own surgery 12 years ago with Dr. Chin, and since then I've been seeing better than 2020, and I was extremely nervous on the day of my surgery, even though I had seen nothing but happy patients, because I had been here for about a month before I did my surgery. I felt nothing, including anxiety. Uh, next up, we're going to be seeing uh, Balu, who is our business development manager, and he just had his surgery back in April, so he's more of a fresher patient, whereas I'm more of a veteran patient. So come on up, Balu. Dr. Chin did my surgery uh, like uh, six weeks ago now, and I'm already seeing better than 2020. We guarantee that you will never have a flap complication because we never cut flaps. And uh, Dr. Dovzik actually mentioned something about this as far as, you know, some patients who have thin corneas, they also may have a condition called keratoconus. Not many people have it, but some do. So if you were told you had thin corneas and you were a bad candidate for LASIK, you can still most likely get the procedure done for LASIK sec because there is no cutting involved. But if you're also one of the unlucky few with this rare condition called keratoconus, we now offer something called corneal cross-linking, which has been FDA approved since I believe 2014. And we actually have Elias here who had his cross-linking done about six weeks ago, was it? Nine. About nine weeks ago, excuse me, time flies. So please come on up for a moment, Elias. Let us know a little bit about your experience and how things were going and you know the difference between need versus want on cross-linking and not awesome. cross-linking. Hi, my name is Elias, and I am a, a, a patient here at Park Avenue LASIK. Um, I initially found Park Avenue LASIK by just doing research. So I had previously um, had a keratoconus and crossing in surgery on my left eye, and um, when it was time to to fix my right eye, which I also have cross-linking and keratoconus on my right eye, um, I was not able to get a hold of the surgeon, and that really concerned me because if I'm not getting good customer service, then it's just something I was not really comfortable with. And that's when I found Park Avenue LASIK. And one of the reasons I came here for a consultation and a second opinion was 
um, because he is one of the industry leaders in this space. So uh, I saw that he taught at Harvard and that really impressed me. I saw that he went to more universities than probably any other surgeon that at least I have researched, uh, including like Columbia and Emory, uh, New York University, Dartmouth and Harvard. So that really impressed me and so it made me want to come down and get a second opinion. Um, during that visit, uh, they assessed that I was a good candidate for for cross-linking, they'd be able to help me, and I can get LASIK, so I have two surgeries in one. And now I'm really excited to be able to wake up and see uh, the view from, from my 34th floor. So I see buildings that I was never able to see before. Uh, I'm able to read a lot better, and just my overall lifestyle has really changed. You have to really ask yourself, with these complicated patients, with these so-called high-risk situations, why is LASIK safer where you can actually perform these procedures, it's because there's no cutting involved. So long as you keep the eye on one piece, you don't really have to worry about that kind of thing. And obviously there's a different post-op protocol and all of that, but Dr. Chin, when he was at Harvard as a resident, is when LASIK was invented. He just took it, ran with it, and he's been refining it ever since. We're talking about 1996 to 2024. It's nearly three decades. So even what LASIK once was, compared to what it is now, is light years in terms of difference and in terms of safety. Next up, we're going to be hearing from Dr. Chin's fiance, Masha, uh, who's going to be doing her surgery today. So again, you have to kind of ask yourself, you know, if it's such a safe procedure, then of course you're going to feel okay operating on your own fiance. Hi, everyone. My name is Maria. For me, LASIK very important because uh, soon I'm married and also I'm swim, I want driving in car and uh, for my life in a very, very important. Don't, I don't worry, yeah, I don't worry. But the funny thing about it when it happens to you, and this is a very common barrier for many people who are desperate to get out of their glasses and contacts, is the issue of anxiety. And on the day of my surgery, I'm sure Dr. Chin still remembers to this day, uh, I almost didn't do the surgery, right? Because I was so scared of actually having it done. Uh, we have all different kinds of medications that can help you really relieve that anxiety, starting with Valium, which helps you relax. Uh, we even admi FDA administered uh, ketamine, uh, along with laughing gas, which many of you who've been to the dentist before know is uh, nitrous oxide. So with those three powers combined, you're not gonna feel any anxiety if you're feeling any kind of anxiety to begin with. So Constantine himself, he first came in as a patient and uh, has now been working as patient coordinator with Dr. Chin for about seven years now. And uh, he too has also had his surgery. Uh, yeah, so I've been a filmmaker, a photographer all my life. So I wanted to get rid of my glasses because it would always fog up against the camera and the contacts would dry out. I get pink eye once a month from sleeping in my contacts. It's been one of the best things I've ever done ever in my life to get my eyes fixed. I realized something very important while working here. Um, most people are so content with their glasses and they feel like it's a normal everyday part of your life. However, they forget to realize that walking around with glasses is the same thing as walking around with a crutch and thinking it's okay. They just get so comfortable and so used to it, but it is a handicap, and I realized that after I did my LASIK. I do just want to mention one more thing. I do have MGD. Uh, the oil in my eyelids has a tough time coming out. Uh, every so often, every couple of months, I do a thermal one-touch here uh, where they heat up the oil in the eyelids and manually extract it. Uh, if you don't extract it, it's kind of like melting butter and uh, basically turns back to butter if you don't push it out. Uh, the oil in your eye helps prevent the tears from evaporating. Very, very important if you have dry eyes, you might have MGD. Come here, get the thermal one touch. It's awesome. I love it. Yeah, the number one indication of people with LASIK who can't get it is thin cornea. So um, basically... Uh, for each amount of prescription you take off from uh, the, the eye, you have to take off more tissue. So if the person's like minus three, you have to take off about 30 microns of cornea tissue. That's about like, you know, 30 out of a, a, a thousand millimeters, okay? So it's like, it's not a lot of tissue. But if you have a very high prescription or you have a thin cornea, you're going to get too deep in the cornea. It's not going to be safe. So I would say of the people who were told they can't get LASIK, like 90% of them, or thin cornea. Either they have a thinner cornea than average to born that way, or they have a normal thickness cornea and just a high prescription, but the dons are just gonna say thin cornea. They're not gonna bother saying, you have a normal thickness cornea, you just have a high prescription. So 
almost all of those people we can fix. So I would say once I would say once a week we have someone come in, kick at LASIK thin cornea, and then we do a surface LASIK. We're not cutting a flap, so we're saving a lot of tissue, and then we can do them. So I would say everybody out there who wanted to get LASIK and couldn't get it done thin cornea, they really should just come here and just get it done. You know, I'm a cornea specialist, so I would say 99% of the people with dry eyes um, could see a lot better uh, if they went to cornea specialist. That means they did one or two year fellowship in cornea after um, ophthalmology residency, they could come here. We take medical insurance. So I, I think people like that should come. Also, if you have all these distortions after a LASIK, we could do a LASIK. Basically, we, we can enhance that by uh, doing a surface ablation. It's like a LASIK on top of a LASIK. And then basically, before you do it, we could do a preview lens. Our brand of laser, Visex, um, is the only laser that you can try before you buy. So basically, we, we do all the data for the um, procedure, and then instead of doing the procedure, we just cut a little disc of plastic. It's just, it's just the thing right here, see? So you insert this into the laser where the eyeball goes, and then you treat the, the plastic. It's like the eye. And then the patient holds it up, and then they see how much better they're going to go. Um, so I think we're ready to go into the OR. So we're just going to have the people on the tripod to go in first, and then you're going to follow so they can sit up. Open wide, don't blink. You gotta keep your head like this. Yeah. You gotta stop blinking. Yeah, open both eyes wide. Yeah, that's good. And, but you gotta look at the red, there's a, the blinking light. You gotta look at the blinking light. Five HD. Yeah, there we go. And, oh, yeah, that's good. Open wide. Don't blink. Okay, a little bit of suction. No, no, no. Just relax. Tell, tell her it's only going to be another minute. Yeah, and just tell her to breathe normally. Both eyes open. Chill out, you know. Don't blame. Keep your eyes open. You did great. Antibiotic drop, steroid drop, antibiotic drop, yeah. open wide, no blinking. How was it? It didn't really hurt, right? I just said right now, like more, more, more work is like, oh my god, why are you? <laughs> yeah, so I guess the Valium helped. You don't yeah, drink, you I don't... right now in the, in the second uh, operation, if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people like it actually after yeah, the yeah. Valium. And have you had laughing gas or nitrous oxide before? Yes, yes, yes. One year, one year ago, yeah. Oh, okay, and then, but you, you've never had ketamine before, right? Ketamine never. But how, how'd you like, how'd you like the ketamine? It's, it's, I don't like it. Ketamine gives you an out-of-the-body experience. It's almost like you're watching yourself get lasered. So you, you didn't like the ketamine, right? Yeah, Dr. Dovzik didn't like it either. It really hit her like very hard. Um, nitrous is lighter. Nitrous is more like floating on clouds. You like the nitrous, right? Yeah, people like the nitrous. So you call it funny gas. Look, your prescription wasn't that bad. You were, you were somewhere between minus one and minus two, to tell you the truth. So you had low myopia, low astigmatism. It's not going to be that dramatic because, again, you, you didn't have that high a prescription and we're under correcting, but it should be better, okay? So I guess we're going to count the three together and then uh, you're going to open your eyes and it's going to be, it's going to be better. Okay, so we're going to count the three. Ready? One, two, three. Open your eyes. Ah. It's so awesome. Ah.
uh, much better, right? So it's, you have to blink a little bit, and don't worry if it's not. Here we go. Open your eyes. Congratulations. Good job. Very good luck. Go. <laughs> so far. Yay, good job.